Hi, my name is John, and I come here, actually got quite lucky. I was going to talk to you about our environment mm -hmm. and the way they affect animals and plants, including the bees. And I came out here to talk about my bees, and I was lucky enough to find a wild swarm that is forming right now as we speak. As you can see, the bees around me are actually not from my hive. They're a wild swarm in the area and it looks like they've come here to make their home. I guess this is sort of where I start from when I think about why it's so important for us to protect the environment from the things that we're doing as, a, as mankind to harm these creatures. Look at all these bees here behind me. When you're standing here amongst them, I think the one thing that really stands out is the fact that while together they seem very powerful, and indeed they are with the contributions they make to the environment, each and every one of these little tiny bees here flying around are actually a very, very fragile insect. They are very susceptible to the environmental conditions that are around us. And therefore, we need to be concerned about the things we are doing to the environment and how it is affecting them. Last year, here, let me show you, uh, let me show you the swarm that's forming here on this tree. Perhaps you can see them right here. You see them beginning to form their ball? It was exactly around this time, about two years ago, that the state of California unveiled their program to begin spraying um, blanket areas across the state of California with an undisclosed pesticide. Now, at the time, I was a new beekeeper, having just recently got involved with the, the insect, and I was concerned what it meant to have pesticides and chemicals being rained down upon me. I had actually moved out here to be away from this sort of toxic intrusions and thought that I was safe and had a nice oasis in which to raise these animals and in a, pest, in a pesticide free and chemical free environment making sure that I didn't bring any chemicals that might harm them onto my property. The thought that the state was going to come out here and spray the air above me without my permission of potentially affecting these creatures that you see forming here in this ball behind me had me quite concerned. I was very concerned that it was going to not only affect the bees that I raise here, but also the plants and other animals that I, that I have here on the farm. Now, interestingly, the government had said that you know, the programs that they were going to do, the, the pesticides they were going to spray, would not harm these creatures. They were apparently new technology that they called pheromones, and these pheromones were just natural scents that animals, especially insects, use to communicate. Uh, bees use pheromones to communicate. These bees right here are clumping in this ball precisely because the queen that's at the center of that ball is actually emitting a pheromone that attracts the other bees to them, that causes them to swarm and create this ball right here that you see. So in the insect world, pheromones are very, very powerful, very powerful chemicals indeed that can govern the entire behavior of the insect. Well, the state wanted to use a pheromone 
that was specific to a moth and specific to the moth's mating habits in order to disrupt those mating habits and try to eliminate this particular moth from the state of California. But there were a lot of concerns about tests that they had done. Did they test them on bees? How will the bees respond to these pheromones? Do the bees, um, can they react to them? Is there any harm? We all know the importance of bees and we all know that the bees like these um, are suffering. We're, we're fortunate here today to actually have a, for, a swarm forming, which means that the bees are doing well this year. But we know overall the bees are actually having quite tough a time. And so, you know, amongst many questions, including the impacts of these pheromones on humans, was the impact on animals, and who's going to stand up for the rights of these bees? Well, it turns out that after doing some research, there was a study that was done on this particular type of pesticide that was going to be used by the state, and in particular the inerts that are used in the pesticide, and how they affect bees and other insects, primarily bees. And in this particular study, it found that the pheromones by themselves are not useful. They have to be um, distributed over time, continually over time. And you can't do that by just fly flying a plane over once, spraying an area with just the pheromone, and then going away, because the pheromone will essentially dissipate the minute the plane flies away. So what they actually do is encapsulate the pheromone in a time-release capsule, which is essentially a biodegradable piece of plastic, a little plastic capsule. They look like little spheres, little BBs, but they're microscopic. You can't see them without a microscope. And inside of these plastic capsules, they actually put the pheromone inside. So while they were telling the public it's just a pheromone, that was only partly true. The reality was that there was more than just a pheromone. There was the inerts and there was this plastic capsule that was involved. Well, this study showed that these little creatures right here, these bees, see how tiny they are? See how fragile they are? These bees actually mistake these plastic capsules as pollen. And they will actually go out into the environment and collect these plastic capsules and return them to the hive, thinking they've found food. Now this isn't very much unlike the way albatross will find bits of plastic in the ocean and take it back to their nesting sites and feed these plastic pieces to their babies, causing the baby's stomachs eventually to fill with plastics and at some point the baby albatross die because they can no longer hold enough food in their stomach to nourish them. Well, if these bees if these bees are flying out by the thousands and taking these plastic capsules back with them to the hives and feeding them to their young well, it's only common sense that that's having an effect on the population, on the bees themselves and their health. For if they're eating plastic instead of pollen, then it's definitely, even if there's some pollen mixed in there, going to be affecting their strength and their tolerance to diseases. And then we wonder why the bees are suddenly disappearing and why they're falling susceptible to all sorts of Essentially, their immune system's failing, and they're falling, you know, ill to things that never affected them in the past. You know, whenever something systemic like this starts happening, it's critical to look into the environment and to understand how this is happening and what we might be doing to contribute to it. Let's go ahead and go over and take a look inside one of the hives and we can see how these bees out here actually bring the pollen back into the hive and what they do with it.